sometimes when we mess up with God, we think that our ministry and our calling and our relationship with God is over. Yes. But thanks to God, I want you to understand that all of us have messed up at one point of time in our lives. And some of us have been Jonas that's been on a run from God at one point of time in our life. But I don't care how you have messed up with God. If you repent unto God, God will bring you out of the situation that you got yourself in. Because a lot of times we get ourselves in situations because we disobey God. God is talking to somebody this morning. And sometimes we find ourselves in places that we never thought we would find ourselves in simply because we disobey God. Yes. And sometimes the enemy will try to convince you, praise God, that your life is over because you have disobeyed God. And he'll try to make you think you should just throw away your purpose and throw away your calling and, and, and throw away your destiny because you don't mess up with God. But let me tell you something. God wants you to understand this morning that if you just turn back unto him. Yes. If you just repent unto God, that God will bring you out of the situation that you got yourself in, and God will make sure you make it to your destination on time. Now, thanks to God, some of us think because we messed up with God, we think we're behind schedule. Oh, yes, we do. We say, God, I'm behind schedule because I should have been here 10 years ago, and I've been running from, from you for the last 10 years, and now, God, I'm behind schedule. Now, God, what do we do now, God? Because you told me that you had a calling for me, and you told me that you got a purpose for me. But God, I, I took off running, and now God has been sent back some time. So now, God, what did I do? God said, the only thing, don't, don't be concerned about the time, because God said, I redeem the time. Come on, say God. God can redeem the time, and your God still can get you to the place where he wants you to go on time. Somebody say, on time. On time. You're going to get there on time. Come on. God called you to preach. Guess what? And you're going to get there on time. I know God told you to go to live a long time ago, and you didn't do what God said, and you feel like that you have been pushed back. But God said, when you repent and you get that thing right, God said, I'm not only am I going to bring you out, but God said, I'm also going to get you to your destination on time. Yeah. And Jonah found this out the hard way. Because God told Jonah, go to Nineveh and tell the people of Nineveh to repent. Come on, see, God would tell them, go to some people and tell those people to repent. God said, I'm getting ready to overthrow the whole city. Yeah. God said, I'm going to kill everybody in the city if they do not repent. And you know Jonah didn't want to go. Right. Jonah had unforgiveness and racism in his heart toward these people. And Jonah said, I don't care if they fry. He said, I'm not going down to Nineveh and tell them nothing. Oh my God, he was disobedient. Went down to Joppa and found him a boat, and he was on his way to Tosh. He was going a different direction than what God told him. Praise God. This was not a sinner, this was a prophet. Yes. This was a man of God. This was a man who knew God. This was a man who had a relationship with God. He's going the other way. How many saints in the house of God that God has told you to do something and you ain't did it yet? Oh, you just a Jonah and you a Jonah head on the run. Ain't no use looking to somebody at the club all day at the club, baby. You just as rebellious as them because God told you to go and you still ain't with yet. Come on, on. God. But Jonah's on the run. On his way to Tosh. Got all about praise God and God sent a storm. We, we, we already know the facts of the story. God sent a storm, praise God. And the men got afraid and when everything was over, Jonah said, I want to wait the storm going to stop and then y'all got to throw me off the boat because I'm the problem. We found that our man said that sometimes, thanks God, we are the problem. We are the problem. Yes, Lord. Come on, thanks to God. Come on. Sometimes we look in the mirror and that's the problem right there. Yes. It's not nobody else, it's you. You disobey God, come on, be truthful. You done got inside God's will, come on. You, come on, you procrastinate, come on. You drag in your feet to do what God has called you to do. Come on, you're a Jonah and you're on a run. And Jonah say, I'm the problem. Come on, sir. I'm the problem. They get Jonah, they do Jonah off the boat. You do Jonah off the boat, the storm ceased. I told you last Sunday, when you throw off the boat, when God said to throw it off, that's when the storm will cease. Come on, thanks God. Oh, but when yeah. he threw Jonah off the boat, God, in his infinite mercy, could have let Jonah die right in. Yeah. But the Bible said God prepared a great fish. Great. Told the fish, go swallow my son. They throw him out the boat. God said, I don't want him to die. God said, I'm going to have mercy. God said, go find Jonah. This great fish. Everybody said, well, a whale can't swallow a man. Because we don't believe the word of God. How can God make a donkey talk? Come on. Have you ever heard a parrot talk before? Yes. 
What's wrong with you? <laughs> can God make a parrot talk? If God can make a parrot talk, surely God can make a donkey talk. Come on, say God. But the Bible says, can't nobody, can't no whale swallow no man. The Bible didn't say it was a whale. That's right. The Bible said God prepared a great fish, a, great a big fish, fish <laughs> that was able to swallow Jonah. I know you hear some preacher say a whale. No, he didn't say a whale. He said God prepared a great fish. Yes, yes. And this great fish that God prepared came, and when they threw Jonah out their boat, and he went in their water, that great fish came up and opened up his mouth and closed his mouth. My God. And the Bible said Jonah was in the belly of the great fish mm -hmm. for three days and three nights. I want to talk about the belly today because I can tell you if you're disobeying God because you'll find yourself in this belly. Oh yeah. In this belly, this 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 belly was a was a jail cell for Jonah. The key Jonah, the, the, the belly was a was a was a was a holding place to hold Jonah. Oh my God, because if you disobey God and run from God, sometimes God will put you in a holy place. Oh yes, yes. The belly was a hiding place for Jonah. Because Jonah would have died if he would have went down in that water. But God was hiding Jonah. It was other sharks and other animals in the water, but God was hiding Jonah. Sometimes God got to hide you. Oh, yes. Paul says, God, yes. I'm telling you, I'm speaking to you by way of experience. Sometimes God got to hide you. Sometimes God got you in a holy place, and sometimes God trying to hide you. Yes, thank you, Lord. You said praying for your children. Yes. And praying for that boy. And praying for their rebellious daughter. Mm. And God save them. Yeah. Some of your mothers and grandmothers are praying for you, and you don't even know it. And it's because God got you in a holy place, and God is hiding you right now. Let me tell you something. Sometimes your children go to jail, and you say, God, how come they're in jail? And you better have a nervous breakdown. But God said, what you don't understand right now, I'm hiding them. Yes, yes. Because God said, if I don't let them go to jail, God says somebody going to kill them, or they're going to kill somebody else, and they're going to have a life sentence, sentence in prison. God said, right now, I know they hurt, but God said, right now, I'm holding them. And I'm hiding him. Oh, yes. Thank they down in the belly. It was not God's will for Jonah to be in the belly of a great fish. He told Jonah to go to Nineveh. His plans was for Jonah to get on a boat and go to Nineveh. But Jonah went a different direction. This was not God's original plan for Jonah to be in the belly of a great fish. It's not God's plan for your children to go to jail. But since they disobeyed God, God had to use a different alternative so he can save their soul. Come on, say God. And Jonah was in a holy place. A holding place. A hiding place. Yes. Sometimes jail is a hiding place for some people. Because God said, if I don't snatch him and, and let him be in jail for three years straight, God said, somebody going to kill the boy. And God said, I don't want his mother, his father to go through that. So God said, I'm going to hide you. Come on, say, God. Sometimes you know where your children are. Okay, God, they're in jail. I know where they're in. Praise God. I know they're in prison. Yes. Come on, say, God. God, I'm asking you to keep on hiding. And I'm asking you to save them. Yes, Lord. Yes. While they're in the belly. Because Jonah was in the belly. In the belly of this great fish was dark. Because when you're in the belly, you're running from God. Things are dark. Yes. And what I mean by that, there is double light so you can see your way. And you don't know which direction that you're going in life. You don't know what you're going to do the next day. Every day is a routine, and you're in darkness, and you don't know which direction that you're going. Why? Because you're down there inside of the belly of the great fish. God gets you in a holy place. The belly of this great fish was soundproof. Jonah couldn't hear nothing on the outside. My and God. nobody on the outside can hear anything on the inside that great fish. When I say it's soundproof, I mean that you crying out, but don't nobody hear you. Don't nobody hear you. You're making noise, but don't nobody hear you. Don't nobody understand what you're going through. Come on. If they just understood how your heart feel, and sometimes you feel you you, you was contemplating suicide. If the person sitting next to you just knew that sometimes you wanted to check out of here, but guess what? You're in a soundproof place, and I don't care how much you tell people you're proud, yes. they don't understand it. Why? Because God got you in a place that you got to come to Him. Come on, yes. God. Ain't nobody else gonna help until you say yes unto God. Yes, Lord. But He was down there in the belly. And it was soundproof. Yes, Lord. Jonah screamed and screamed. My God. And nobody heard Jonah. 
And some of you be running from God. And even out there on Facebook, you screaming inside your spirit and don't nobody hear you. My God. Because God said, I have already signed up, but you have to cry out to me. Oh, yes. Yes. And we're in a soundproof place. We're in an up and down place. My God. Because when you're in the belly, the fish went up and it came down. It went up and it came down. It went up and it came down. This was the motion that Jonah was going through. Because when you're running from God, you begin to have emotional roller coasters. Come on. Listen to me. One minute up. Next minute you're down. One minute you're happy, the next minute you're back sad. Yes. And you say, I cannot put my feet on it. Why come it seem like I'm happy one minute? And then 10 minutes later, I'm throwing a temper tantrum and it seems like I'm sad again. Baby, you need to check your life yes. and see how you run from God and are you disobeying God. Because as long as you run from God. Oh yes, yes. No joy. Yes, the truth. No peace. Yes. Happy for a little while. Back down in the dumps again. Why? Because you're running from God. And Jonah knew that feeling. He was inside of the belly. Praise God. He was feeling sick going up and down. I'm talking about emotionally sick. Sick in his body. Praise God. In a dark place. In a soundproof place. Where nobody could hear him. Jonah was in a nasty place. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And everything inside that fish. Jonah was in there with it. The smell inside of this great fish was disgusting. And he found himself in a nasty place. And sometimes we run away from God. We find ourselves doing nasty things and, and being in nasty yes. situations because we're running from God. Because right now in time, we in the bed. Oh yes. Come on, saints of God. He was in. He was in a nasty place. He was in a confined place. My God. Lord. Lord. Nowhere to go. John walked forward. He bumped up against the stomach and went back and bumped up against the stomach and went to the side and bumped up against the stomach and went to the other side and bumped up against the stomach. He was in a confined place and this is when you're trying to make some step forward but something just knocks you right away. Yeah. So you try to go backwards and something knocks you forward. You try to go to the side and something knocks you back. To the side, you go to that side and something knocks you back. Why? Because you're in a confined place. Oh yeah. You feel confined. You feel like that you're trapped. And God, how do I come out yes. when that screaming is in your spirit because I've been there and you feel confined? You feel like you're about to explode. You're not a mean person, but it seems like anger just comes out of you. Why? Right? Because I feel confined. Come on. It seems like bitterness comes out. Why? Right? Because I feel confined. Because right now I'm in the belly. Oh, God is hiding me. Oh, yes. And I'm in the belly not because God wanted me to be there. But because of my disobedience. Yes. God had to send a great fish to reroute Jonah. You know, sometimes me and my wife drive and we just run the mix or exit or something. Get off on the wrong exit. Praise God. And GPS will reroute you and bring you back on the right course. And this is what God was doing for Jonah. And this is what God is going to do for many of you. That you have got off the right track. But God is sending help to reroute you. Yes. To put you back on the right track. Come on, say God. Ain't he a good God? Yes, he but God had to use a great fish. Yes. It was not his plan for Jonah to go that direction. No. I'm going to tell somebody something. It's not God's plan for you to go to jail. Oh, no, it's not. It's not his plan. For you to be on your hospital bed before you say yes to God. My God. It's not God's plan for you to be in a crisis before you say yes to God. No, that's not his plan. But if you keep running from God, sometimes God has to use a different alternative to get your attention. Yes, yes. I was one of those that God had to send a great fish to get. Because I would not listen to God when God spoke to me plainly, son, I'm calling you. And stung out. See, some of us, God, we don't obey God. But you know you got those children that's more hard here than the rest of them. <laughs> you got some of the children. Listen, listen, little Ronnie, go over there and sit down. Yes, sir. Then you tell the little Billy, go sit down. He ain't sat down yet. <laughs> you got to put something on him before he go sit down. God got some children, praise God, that he got to whoop a little bit harder than others. Come on. And God is rerouting your life this morning. Come on, God is talking to you. God said, listen, I got another route for you to get off. I'm trying to get you to your destination. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Jonah found himself in a belly. No peace and no joys in that belly. 
No light is in their belly. Uh -huh. No direction is in their belly. And the only way you can come out is when you give God a yes. Oh, yes. Come on, thanks God. The Bible said John was in the belly, and the Bible said John was praying. Yes. He cried out to God. When he got in that belly, he, he prayed. He, he, he said, I cried out to God. John gave you the prayer that he prayed while he was in the belly. Uh -huh. He said, I prayed, and I cried out to God. I cried out to God. Yes. John was not praying because he was a real prophet. No, he wasn't praying because of that. Jonah wasn't praying because they had a prayer meeting. Come on. No, he wasn't praying because he was a prayer. Ain't nobody called no prayer meeting. Praise God. Jonah was not praying because he was a prayer warrior. That was not the reason why Jonah was praying. Come on. Jonah was not praying unto God. Praise God. Just because he felt like praying. But Jonah said, I pray. I cried out to God. Why? He said, I cried out to God because what? Because of my affliction. Yes. Yes, Lord. He said, the reason why I cried out to God was because of my affliction. Yes. You got to know who to turn to oh, yes. when you're in the belly. You got to know who to call on when your body is struck with sickness. Come on. You got to know who to call on when you're going through crisis. Come on, say God. And Job will pray to the Lord. Yes. God will go to the person he can turn to. See, what nobody else around Jonah in a great fish, and sometimes God will get you to a place that there is nobody else that you can turn to or talk to. Yeah. Oh, 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 God. And when you find yourself in that situation, you need to understand that God is calling you. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He said, I'm proud because of my affliction. Because of my affliction. Not because I was a mighty man of God. He said, no. I was on a run from God. Yes. He said I was a prophet, but I was disobeying God. He said, so I can't tell you that I was praying because I was at the prayer meeting. Jonah said, I prayed because of my affliction. Yes. Come on, says that affliction means tightness. Jonah said, I was in a tight place. Yes. The reason why I come, I cried out to God. Affliction means to be distressed. Jonah said, I was distressed. I was depressed. And that's the reason why I cried out to God. Affliction means trouble. Trouble. And Jonah said, I got to be truthful with you. I pray, I pray, I cried out to God, and I prayed because I was in trouble. Yes. Oh, can some of you talk to me on yes. today? I don't even let nobody know. But it been many times that Pastor was in trouble before I came to God that I called out to God. Yes. And when I called out to God, each time he saved me. Come on, say God. Even when I went back, God still saved me. Why? Because when I was in trouble, I cried out to God. Yes. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jonah said, I cried out to God, not because I was a righteous man. He said, I was disobedient. Oh, yeah. He said, I was running to God. He said, I cried out and prayed to God because of my affliction. Yes, and I know some of y'all got some pretty stories, but, but Pastor don't got no pretty story. Mm. I don't got no sanctimonious story to tell you that. I just loved God, and I just called on him and came to God. Baby, you didn't come to God. God came to you. Yeah. And you didn't find God. God found you. Yeah. The Bible said, praise God. We love him because he first loved us. Come on, say God. I just love the Lord so much, you mind thing. Even Peter, praise God, told Jesus, he said, Lord, I love you. And Jesus said, do you love me? Peter, Simon, Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. God said, Simon, Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus said, Simon, Peter, son of Jonah, do you love me? And Peter got quiet because he knew that so three times. And people say, Lord, you know. Come on, say to God. See, God knows where your heart is at. You can right. fake in front of people that are teaching the Lord of God. But they say something, you can let God tell you where your heart is at. And I didn't come to God because I love God. I came to God because I needed God. Come on, say to God. He's in my shield. He's in my buckle. He's in my strong tower. He's been already in. He's been already out. He's been already over. He's been already through. Oh, my God. He's been in water. In dry places. Yes. He's been praying in the starving lands. He's been my strength. He's been my fortress. He's been my buckle. He's been my strong tower. Come on, church. Come on. 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 Come on.
that be? Yeah. I had to be truthful. It's embarrassing because I didn't call on him because I just love him. I called on him because I need him. Oh, yes. And thanks to God, when you get in your spirit, and God, I need you. Oh, yes. And I know that I'm not all the way there, God. Yes. And I haven't done that and I haven't crossed every T this morning for somebody this morning. God said, I'm still calling you, son. I'm still calling you, Lord. Yes. And God said, this and call on me in your time of trouble. And God said, I will deliver you. Come on, thanks to God. You get your get time, Psalm chapter 50. Verse 15, God said, call on me in your time of trouble. And God said, I will deliver you. I will deliver and God said, when I deliver you, God said, you glorify me. Yeah. The reason why I come God delivered you is because God wants you to glorify him. Yeah. God knew when you cried out and said, God, I promise you, if you get me out of this, I promise you I'll never do it again. God knew you were lying when you said it. Uh -huh. But he's such of a gracious God. He oh, can yes, get you out anyways. Yeah. You know why? Because God is a gracious and loving God. Yeah. And God says, since you cry to me, God I'm going to bring you out because I love you. Even though you don't love me. Yeah. Even though you won't obey me. Even though you won't surrender to me. Come on, say God. But this morning, you have to make your mind up. That God want to surrender to you. Come on, say God. Yes. Because you heard my cry. You heard my cry. You heard my cry. And it wasn't because I was righteous. And it wasn't because I loved you. And it wasn't because I was seeking after you. Because it ain't nothing in your heart that will make you seek after God. David said, God, cook me. Then I'll praise you. Then I'll praise you. See, we try to do stuff out of our place. If the Holy Ghost don't come down inside yeah, you, hey. no man can call Jesus Lord except by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Oh, thank God. You couldn't even call on God if you weren't for God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You think you called on God by yourself. <laughs> you think you came to the altar, you thought that was you. No, baby, it's the Spirit of God. Listen, Jesus said, no man come to me unless the Spirit of God draw him. God got to draw him. Yeah. And the word draw means to drag. drag. And when you drag somebody, it means they don't want to go. Hey, hey. You drag them, they mean they don't want to come. You tell the child, come on, you got to drag them, pray God, because they don't want to go. Come on, say it's God. But listen, he said, no man come to the Father unless the Spirit drag him. And can I tell you, God dragged me through some stuff. Drag me through alcohol and drag me through smoking cigarettes and marijuana and drag me through gang violence and drag me through all kind of crazy stuff. You know why? Because God dragged me and I get my praise because He dragged me. I get my glory because He dragged me. I get the love because He dragged me. And somebody didn't tell God, keep on dragging me. God, keep on dragging me. Yes, Lord. Keep on dragging me, God. But He said, because of my affliction, I cried out to God. Don't you let nobody stop you from crying out to your God. I told you, he said in Psalms chapter 50, verse 15, he said, call on me in your time of trouble, and I will deliver you. I will deliver you. Yes. But people try to tell you, ain't you should call on God now? Uh-huh. You ain't been calling on, now all of a you call on God. Now all of a sudden, you need God. Uh-huh. Don't call on him now. Don't you ever let somebody tell you not to call on God. Come on, sir. Come on, say God. He created you. He created them. And if they don't want to call on, praise God. You don't let them stop you from calling on him. Yeah. Because you got people that are trying to stop you yeah. from calling out to God. But blind boys, hey, hey. somebody roadside blind can see. Blind for years. Uh-huh. But he heard. He heard. That Jesus was coming through. Oh, yes. Hearing Jesus' name, Jesus. Jesus, son of David. Son of David. People calling him, grabbing on Jesus while he walking. And blind by the man said, I heard him in Jesus. And blind by the man said, Jesus. Yes. Son of David. Have mercy on me. And the people told him, shut up. Uh-huh. Don't you call to a rabbi like that. Don't you pray? It's disrespectful. Uh -huh. Come on. Because when you're going through stuff, people are very insistent. When you're going through stuff, people overlook your pain. Come on, say God. Hey. People will tell you don't call out to God. Thank you, Jesus. But don't you let nobody stop you from calling hey. out to God. And the Bible says, God, by the man, kept on crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he got Jesus' attention. Yes, Lord. Jesus came to him and said, what do you want? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. That I may receive the Lord my touched sight. him and his sight came back. Why? Because he cried out. Right. The ten leopards stood far off and said, if you are willing, oh Lord, you can heal us. 
Jesus said, go to show yourself to the high priest. And while they was going, they was healed. Why? Because they cried out to God. Peter was walking on water one minute. The next minute, he was sinking. Yes. Because one minute you can be in the spirit, the next minute you can get over in the flesh. Come on, sir. And the Bible said he began to sink, but the Bible said he cried out to God. Right. Lord, save me. And he cried out, praise God, God, pour his feet out of the mountain clay. Yes. God, don't you let nobody. Oh, yes. Tell you not to cry out to God. I don't care if it's the pastor. I don't care if it's the bishop. Come on, I don't sir. care if it's the apostle. I don't care if it's the pope. Praise God. I don't, I don't care if it's the devil. I don't care if it's your haters, your family members. Praise God. I don't care if it's your past. Don't you let nothing or nobody tell you that you can't call out to God because he's waiting for your cry. Come on, say God. I don't care what you get in the past. Yes. Cry out to God. Oh, yeah. Jonah said, I pray and cry out to God. Uh-huh. Because of my affliction. Because of my affliction. Oh, look at verse 4. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. In verse 4, John said, I was cast into the deep. Floods surrounded me. Billows passed over me. Look at verse 4. Then I said, I have been cast out of his sight. Yet, I will look again towards his holy temple. Jonah said, listen, I got outside his will. He said, but yeah, I'm going to look to him again. Oh, yes. He said, I know I missed up, but yeah, I'm going to look to him again. Yes. The word yet means up to now. <laughs> Jonah said, up to now, I'm going to look to God. Yet means at this present time. Jonah said, at this present time, praise God, I'm going to keep on looking unto God. Somebody said, at this present time. At this present time. I'm going to keep on looking to God. I know I got inside of his will, but yet I'm going to look unto God again. Come on, says God. You need to look to God again. Yes, Lord. I know you missed up, but look to God again. Thank you, Jesus. Jonah took his eyes out of God for a split second through his disobedience. Praise God. And found himself in the great fish belly. Oh, my God. And Jonah said, I missed up. Yes. I got inside his will. But Jonah said, yeah. I'm going to look again. Yes. It's been times in my life that I had to look again. I know I got inside of his will, but I looked again to God. And can I tell you that every time I look unto God, God pulled me out of the miry clay each time. Ain't he a good God? Ain't he a merciful God? And this is the word of God to somebody today. You look got outside God's will and you go in your own direction. But God want me to tell you to look to him again. God said, trust me again. God said, call me again. God said, come on. God said, come to me again. God said, watch me again. Come on, say God. Because your God is merciful. Yet again, I'm going to look to, look to him again. Oh, my God. Don't let the devil tell you that you ain't look to God again. <laughs> because the devil will tell you it's over. Yes. You've missed up too many times now. And God is not going to hear you. And sometimes we look at the situation we're in. And we're in a dark place. And we say, God, I don't see myself coming out because you're too busy looking at what's around you instead of looking up to God. Yes. Baby, if you just lift up your eyes and look up to God, He won't bring you out that dark place that you're in right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jonah said, Yet yeah, I'm going to look again. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And Jonah said in verse 9, But I will sacrifice to you, O God. This is what he said to God in the belly of the great fish. Some people have told God in jail. Some people have told God on their deathbed. Some people have told God in their hospital bed. He said, but I will sacrifice to you, God, with the voice of thanksgiving. He said, I will pay what I what? What I have out. Look at verse 9. He said, I will pay what? What I have out. He made a vow to God in the belly. He made a vow. He said, God, if you get me out of this, I vow I'll go to Nineveh. I do what you say. Sometimes when you make a vow to God, they move God's hand. Some of us have made vows to God, but you ain't kept it. People on Facebook, you made vows to God, you ain't kept it. You got to keep your vow unto God. Jonah said, I'm going to keep my vow of what I say unto God. He said, listen, I'm going to keep my vow. I don't broke my vow before the God. I got to be true with you. Who wants somebody fake in front of us? <laughs> Listen, there been times I didn't broke my vow to God. I done told God, God, I promise you if you get me out of this, pray God, God, get me out of it, pray God, do something different. But God still had mercy. Come on. So now I'm keeping my vow. 
I'm going back, but what did you tell God? What did you tell God? I'm looking at somebody in the spirit of God talking to you. What did you tell God you were going to do? If God did this, what you was going to do? What did you promise God a long time ago that you was going to do? God, I serve you all the days of my life. I promise I never leave you. Did you not tell God that? Sometimes we break our vows and we want our company going through stuff because God said, go back. And God, if the Bible says, bitch, not to vow, it's a vow and don't keep it. You made a vow to God, go back and pick that vow back up and say, God, don't keep that vow. Come on, saints of God. But Jonah said, I made a vow unto God. And when I made a vow unto God, praise God, Jonah said, listen, I, he said, I'm going to pay what I vow. He said, salvation is of the Lord. Jonah learned that better can't nobody save but God. Salvation means to save, it means to heal, it means to deliver, it means to preserve, it means to make whole. Come on. He said, I learned down in that belly, I could call out to nobody but Yahweh, nobody but the King Jehovah. And he said, when I was down there in that belly, he said, God brought me out the belly. He said, because only God can save. I think about my, my auntie when she was going through something. She called me on the phone screaming. Praise God. Tyrese! I said, girl, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> they got me in jail. <laughs> I said, got you in jail for what? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and she kept talking. Praise God. I told her, I said, calm down. I said, it's just a smoke it's screen. Me. Yes. I said, God going to bring you out of that. Yes. And guess what? God brought out. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yes, Lord. See, God is a God, good God. He's the God of your salvation. Yes, yes, he is. He's the only God that can say, I don't felt that out. That God is the only God that can save and deliver and set free. It's all in the name of Jesus. I don't try Buddha. I don't try Israel. I don't try confusion. But let me tell you something. None of them bring and deliver. But I call on Jesus. The name is the Lord. Salvation in the name of Jesus. Salvation. Yes. He said, Salvation is of the Lord, is what he said. Yes. And God ain't told Lord to their belly. He said, God is a God of salvation. And I found that I can't tell God who to save and who not to save. Come on. Because Jonah problem took over, but Jonah problem was he told God, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm not going to go. They don't need to be saved. They don't need no mercy. And I'm not going to them. And you need to go ahead and judge them. Because they some wicked people. They don't deserve no salvation. Sometimes we try to tell God who to save. Yes. We try to tell God who to have mercy for. Yes. And who not to have mercy for. Uh-huh. And God, how you going to use that man and the stuff he did in his past? God said, I didn't ask your permission about who I'm going to use. God said, don't you know that man that you judge? God said, that man going to be responsible for me and the soul to get saved. And God said, you only going to get 300 saved. Come on, saints of God. Yes. God said, I have mercy on whomever I want, I want to have mercy on. Come on. Sometimes we try to tell God who to say. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, yes, oh, yes we do. We sit in yes. church and, and how God going to use him. And how God going to use her. And did you hear about what she did back in the day? And did you hear about what he did? Praise God. But we keep what we did. Praise God. He did. Yes. You might even do what I did, but you didn't have to go to hell. Yes. Don't judge nobody because God has raised up a generation of ex gangbangers ex-murderers, ex-robbers. Praise God. Ex-dope dealers. Come on. Come on. God has raised up a generation of exes. You've been getting ready to see the ex-family come up in here. Up to my people that did all kinds of stuff. Yes. They're going to call on to God and give their life unto God. And God going to raise them up and give yes. them the Holy Ghost. And they're going to preach with power. And they're going to preach with glory. Yes. Oh, my God. Come on, praise God. You're going to get ready for the action. So how do you know that? Because I used to be one. Come on, saints God. I was an ex praise God of God. Pull my feet out of the mouth and clay. Come on. He washed me in the blood and cleansed me. In the blood and purified me in the blood. And filled me with the Holy Ghost and gave me purpose and gave me destiny. Come on, saints God. Yes, yes, Lord. But sometimes we try to tell God who to save. Who to save. And who to have mercy for. My God. And you don't know every pastor they got before you don't see him. What you talking about? I don't know a pastor like that. Who don't live like a life like that? Praise God. Every pastor get before you don't see him before. We all have seen him falling what short of the glory of God. But Jonah said, I'm going to tell God who to save and who not to save. Uh -huh. And we only got mercy for dead people anyway. Come on, sir. We don't got mercy for nobody that's living. Mm -hmm. 
You got mercy for Moses because Moses did. Come on. Moses killed the man and, and buried him in the sand. And there you go, preaching about Moses. But if Moses was alive right now, you would say, that man ain't no prophet. <laughs> Come on, saints, God, he done, he done killed that man and, and, and healed him in the sand, and now he talking about some he a prophet, and I laid some people out of Egypt, pray God, and they out there in the woods don't got nowhere to go. You'll be running your mouth, you know why? Because we're trying to tell God who to save and who not to yes. save. Yes, that's the truth. Yes, yes, Lord. But if you don't want no pastor, praise God, who lives a, a bad life, throw out the first five books of the Bible. Yes. Because Moses wrote of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Throw them out. Praise God. King David. We hear people all the time go dance like David danced. Uh -huh. But if David was alive, praise God, you will listen to nothing that David said. That man that slept around with that woman and had that woman husband killed. And he talking about some he a king and, and talking about some he dancing before God. Come on, you wouldn't have no mercy for David. Praise God. You would listen true. to nothing that David said. But if you're going to do that, throw away most of the book of the Psalms. Like David wrote most of the Psalms. Yes. Call Apostle Paul to the stand. And Apostle Paul said, I was killing Christians. Yes. Yeah. I was killing people in the church. Praise God. If Apostle Paul was alive right now, you wouldn't listen to nothing that Apostle Paul said. Right? That man called himself an apostle. And was killing God's people. And now all of a sudden, he's supposed to be holy. Come on, say that. You see how self-righteous we is? Come Praise on, God. You try to tell God who to save and who to have mercy on. But you can't tell God who to save. You can't tell God who to have mercy on. Yes. God will raise up who he want to raise up. But it's a salvation. It's of the Lord. It's of the Lord. And when he made that vow, <laughs> when he cried and prayed out to God, when Jonah got that thing right, the Bible said God spoke to the great fish. Yes. And said, go on dry land and spit him up. Oh, yes. Because everything that God created got ears. Oh, yes, and you say to God, that great fish has some ears. Yes. And there ain't nothing in this universe that they don't got ears. And what I mean by that, whatever God speaks to is going to listen. Yes. Oh, if God told this wall to turn blue, guess what? It'll turn blue. Amen. Come on, say to God. Yes. Because everything that God created got ears. And it'll listen to God. Your sickness got ears. Yes. And if God tells to leave your body, it'll leave your body. Yes. That demon has been coming, you got ears. And if God tells that demon to let you go, guess what? He got to let you go. Everything that God created got ears. Oh, yes. As the apostles, they night on the boat. Jesus spoke to the wind because the wind got ears and got quiet. Oh, yes. Jesus spoke to the waves and the waves stopped by because the waves got ears. Yes. Everything that God created got ears. And your situation got ears. Yes. And if you, if you give your life to God and humble yourself before God, guess what? God will speak to your situation and your situation got to let you go. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. God spoke to the fish. And just like I told you to swallow Jonah, go and spit him out. Go and spit him out. The fish began to go up. Hey! Back up. Took Jonah to the spot. Because I told you, when you repent, God going to bring you out. Yes. And God going to get you to your destination on time. On time. The fish took him right to where he needed to be. Yes. So when he came out that belly, he took off running. Yes. Come on, say God. I told you that God will get you there on time. Yes. So he might have to rewrite him. He might have to take you a different direction. Because God had to take me a different direction. I know the direction that I went was not God's will. But God had to take me a different direction. But guess what? God got me to this place on time. Come on, say God. And I want to tell you that if you repent, if you call out to God, he will bring you out of the situation and he will get you to your destination on time. Turn your feet, say to God. On time. Yes, Lord. And he's on time, God. Yes, he is. Yes, I don't care what you did. I don't care what you did in your past. Yes, Lord. All you got to do is just give it over to God. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Give it to him. Yes, Lord. Talk to him. 